Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach. Let's go ahead and dive right into pipe fill. This first lesson is going to deal with if all the conductors are of the same size and insulation type, meaning if they're all number 12s and THHN. The next lesson, lesson 7.2, will deal with if we have different sizes of conductors and different insulation types, meaning if I have 10s and 12s inside of the same conduit. Let's go ahead and learn about the table that we'll use if they are all of the same size. We're going to use Annex C. And if you've tabbed your codebook, you have an Annex C tab. And if you haven't tabbed it, you can just follow along. If the conductors are all of the same size and insulation type, we get to use like a cheat sheet in Annex C. It's one of my favorite tables in the codebook. You will not use this table if the conduit is 24 inches or less. Now the codebook uses the term nipples, but I want you to imagine in your mind, anytime the conduit is 24 inches or less, you're not going to use Annex C. You're going to use the method that I'll teach you in lesson 7.2. You can head to page 712 of the 2017 and page 729 of the 2020. This video is 2023 compatible. You'll have to get to your page number for Annex C and then you can follow along. So when we get to Annex C, the beginning of it, I call it the start here page because every time you're doing one of these calculations, you're always going to start here if you're using Annex C. Now when we get there, we always read the black bold heading to make sure that we're in the right table. Great, I feel like we're in the right table. Now when we head over to the left hand side, we're going to find types of conduit. And the first one that we come to is EMT electrical metallic tubing. Now let's look at the second one that we come to. It also is EMT. So what is the difference? And that's one of the most important distinctions that we have to watch out for with Annex C. The first version of the table, if you'll notice next to the C1, there is no A symbol. The A symbol signifies compact conductors. There are several different types of conductors out in the industry. Some of them are concentric, but the ones that are compact are bound a little bit tighter and you can actually fit more of those inside of a pipe legally. But for your normal pipe fill questions, they're not compact conductors. Matter of factly, unless it says the word compact conductors, you will never assume that they're compact conductors. And you do not want to use the A versions of these tables. So when you go to the first one, it says C1 EMT. And then the second one is C1A, that's letting you know it's a compact conductor table. Now let's imagine that we did want to go to EMT. Now to slide all the way over, if we look at our far right hand column, we're going to find that that is our page number. And for this table, you're definitely going to want to use a straight edge. Do not trust your eyes on this one. This is not a one point question, meaning that it could count as multiple points on your exam. These are more difficult questions and you don't want to make a simple mistake by not crossing the page correctly. One way that guys eliminate this is they will actually highlight every one that is not in a table. So they'll highlight C1, C2, C3, and they'll use a straight edge and highlight all the way across to the page number to shave off just a few seconds while they're testing. Remember, part of this is strategy and it's beating the clock. You've only got a few minutes to answer these questions. So doing some strategic highlighting can really save you a lot of time on the back end. Now that we've learned about the start here table, let's actually go to where we find the values. So let's imagine that we are using EMT conduit. So we're going to start on the left hand side. We're going to find our type of conduit, being sure that we're not in an A version of the table. Then we use a straight edge and cross over and find the page number. Go ahead and flip to that page number now. And when we get to that page, we're going to find a brand new table and we're going to break it down piece by piece. The main thing that we have to watch out for with this table is that we always read the black bold heading when we get to that section to make sure that we're in the right table. As you'll find throughout the entire Annex C, all of these tables look identical. The only difference is the title of the table. So every time I even flip a page in Annex C, if I have to flip a page, I stop and make sure that I haven't started off into a new table. 
because the difference between you being in this table and that table is just one page, and there's no difference in the table look and feel. So just make sure that you're always reading the table to make sure that you haven't you know, gone off into the A version of the table, which comes right after the regular version, and that you haven't crossed off into another type of conduit. Starting on the left-hand side, we're going to find our type of insulation. And this is where we find some familiar friends, RHH, RHW, THHN, THWN-2, and that's going to be our type of insulation that our wire is coated. And then in the second column is going to be our size of wire. Now, you may find when you're looking that you find your type of insulation, but you don't find your size wire over there in the wire column. That's okay. Just start over until you find the type of insulation again, and then you'll cross over and eventually find your size wire. Then once you find both of those, you'll come across the top of this table, and you'll see your trade size of conduit. All of our familiar friends, 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, and so on and so forth. Once we line all three of those up, all we have to do is come down and tee off, and we find well, how many wires can fit inside of that conduit legally. I love this table because they've done all of the hard work for us that I'm getting ready to teach you in lesson 7.2. How many THW, number 10, can you fit inside of a piece of one inch rigid metal conduit? The first question we ask ourselves is, are they all of the same size and insulation rating? They are, so we're going to head to Annex C using our Annex C tab. When we get to the Annex C Start Here page, we're going to start on the left-hand side until we find our type of conduit, which was rigid metal conduit. Then we're going to come down and make sure that we don't select the A version of that table, and we're going to use our straight edge or our highlighting that we've done, and we're going to go to the page number. When we get to that page number, we're going to read the black bold heading to make sure we're actually in rigid metal conduit and that we're not in the A version of the table. Then we're going to start on the left-hand side until we find our insulation type. Every time we flip a page, we're reading that heading to make sure that we're not starting off into a new table or a new version of the table. Then once we find our insulation type, we're going to cross over to the size of wire. As long as our size of wire is listed there, we're going to come across the top to the size of conduit. Then we come down and we tee off with how many wires can fit inside that conduit. And we find that we can fit 14 of them. Great job! How many more THWN number 10 can you fit into a piece of 3 quarter inch EMT that already contains 4 THWN number 10s? The first thing we're going to ask ourselves, are they all of the same type and insulation? They sure are. So let's head to Annex C. When we get there, we're going to start on the left hand side and find our type of conduit, being sure not to select an A version of the table. Then we cross over and find our page number. When we get to the actual table, we're going to read the black bold heading to make sure we're in the right table. Then we're going to find our type of insulation under the insulation column, find our wire size, and then come across the top to our size of conduit and tee off with our answer. And we find out that we can fit 10 originally, but our question states that we already have four of them in the pipe. So all we have to do is do a little third grade math. We take 10 minus 4 equals 6, and we find out that we can fit 6 more inside of this conduit. Great job! How many 1-aught THW conductors can you fit inside of a piece of 2.5 inch Schedule 40 PVC? Are they all of the same size and insulation? Yes, so we're going to head to Annex C. When we get there, we're going to start on the left-hand side until we find our type of conduit, being sure not to select the A version of the table. Then we come across and find our page number. When we get to the table, we always read the black bold heading to make sure that we're in the right table. Starting on the left-hand side, looking for our type of insulation. When we find it, we go to our size of wire, come across the top until we find our conduit size. Then we're going to come down and tee off and find that we can fit eight more conductors inside of this conduit. Great job! How many more 2-aught THHN conductors can you fit inside of a piece of 3-inch Schedule 80 that already contains five 2-aught THHN conductors? Well, the first question we're going to ask is, are they all of the same size and insulation? Yes, so let's head to Annex C. When we get to Annex C, start here, we're going to start on the left-hand side until we find our conduit. 
being sure that we're not in the A version of the table. Then we're going to come over and cross over and find our page number. When we get to the actual table, we're going to start first and make sure that we're in the right table by reading the black bold heading. Then we start on the left-hand side and find our insulation type, find our wire size, then come across the top and find our conduit size and come down and tee off with how many conductors we can originally fit. And it looks like we can fit 11. Now we have to minus the five that we already have and that lets us know that we can fit six more of these conductors inside of this conduit. Great job. How many more number 10 THW and dash two conductors can you fit inside of a piece of three quarter inch schedule 80 PVC that already contains three number 10 THW in dash two conductors? The first question we're going to ask ourselves: are they all of the same size and insulation type? They are. So we're going to head straight to Annex C. When we get to Annex C at the start here table, we're going to start on the left hand side until we find our type of conduit. Then we're going to verify that we're not in the A version of that conduit. We're going to slide over and find our page number. Then when we get to the table, we're going to read the black bold heading to make sure that we're in the right table. We start on the left hand side and we find our insulation type. Then we find our wire size. Then we come across the top and find our conduit size. And we're going to find that our starting value is seven. We have to minus the three conductors that we already have. And that's going to let us know that we can put four more. All right, y'all, that's the end of lesson 7.1. You can head over to electricalexamcoach.com and check out our completely free version. But if you're really wanting to get your license and you're serious about it, really encourage you to check out our pro version, which will unlock all of the practice tests, quizzes, and all of the other pro features. That is really the recipe for getting your license. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com if there's any way that I can help you in life or business. Let's get to it.